Hello guys, welcome to the Sailor's World, where you find all the seafarer stuffs. Today we'll be discussing about a very important topic, a topic which is very important for every each and every officer. So we'll be discussing about the CORRAC. As we all know, CORRAC is an international convention for collision, regulation 1972. And it's really a very important topic because this is considered as the one of the topic if you do any mistake in this they won't let you pass ahead so, but they just need a basic knowledge from you when you're going for your OWT examination so let's start what actually is in CORRAG? CORRAG is actually an international convention which was adopted in 1972 and it came in force in 1977. In other words, we also say it as the rules of the road. It's like an information which provides some seafarer to navigate or uh, rules which a seafarer should be following on board to safely navigate his vessel. Uh, it's a universal rule. And it total consists of 41 rules which are divided into six sections. We'll be discussing about all those sections and all this rule in upcoming videos. Today, I'm just talking about an introduction to the call, right? So in this video, we'll only be talking about the introduction and we'll be discussing about detailed information about each and every rules, rule by rule, in further videos. So there are total 41 rules, which are divided into six sections what we need to remember and there are four annexes so this is section or part a b c d e and f so part a is in general part b is steering and steering rules part c is lights and shape it gives you information about the lights and shapes part d gives about the information about the vessel and different kind of condition what sounds and light signals vessel should exhibit part e is exemption part f is verification of compliance with the provision of convection and then there is an annexus the annexus contain the technical requirement what are the technical requirement for the lights and the shapes and what are the positioning of the sound signal appliances where it should be placed on board on a vessel during the construction and what are the lights and the shapes which should be internationally followed by each and everyone so that details you'll get in an excess and what are the additional signal signals for the fishing vessels when approach when operating in close proximity so all those details are in the an excess and definitely very important one international distress signals during the time of distress what other signals should be followed and that will be also defining in the index so we'll be going in details in upcoming videos so in short that's what an introduction of a call right it's a simple collision regulation which was what you need to remember that it came in in post in 1972 so that's what thing is important and in short like this is the way how i used to remember all the section so i used to just remember a statement generally steering and sailing vessel like general party steering and sailing vessel steering and sailing part b shows lights and shapes part c lights and shape by making sound and light signal sound and light signal with certain exemption and verification so you just remember this thing generally steering and sailing glue Sailing vessel shows lights and shapes by making sound and light signal with certain exemption and verification. This statement will gonna help you to remember each and every section. So I would just say just remember the statement. So you'll be remembering each and every section. Then later on in this section you can divide what rules comes under this. Well so I hope this statement will gonna help you remember all the parts. Or at least we're gonna help you a bit remember this part because it 
it has been a great help for me to remember all the parts of the Quran. <coughs> Generally, steering and sailing ships shows lights and shapes by making sound and light signals with certain assumption and verification. It gets easier for me. So now, let's go a bit more detail and what are the rules and the different part. So let's go ahead with that. So first, let's start with the part A. So part A is a general it covers a rule from rule number one to rule number three that's one two three it's covering an application of the rules responsibility and definitions so it gives you an information about some of the terminology which are used on board you get a definition of that so it get easier for you to understand that like not under command vessel a ground the ground and all those so it helps you with the definition of that let's see part B I would say one of the most important part that's steering and sailing routes what do you mean by steering and sailing steering and sailing routes it contains rules from Rule number 4 to rule number 19. So what does part B contains? Part B contains a rule from rule number 4 to rule number 19. But we should remember this part B is further subdivided into three sections. Those are section 1 which contains from rule number 4 to rule number 10. It's conduct of vessel in any condition of visibility. It's easily understood. Like what a vessel's conduct should be in any condition uh, any condition of visibility so that is under section one it gonna help you watch keepers what should be the conduct of vessel and section two that starts from rule number 11 to 18 it's the conduct of vessel in sight of one another what a watch keeper keep in mind when the vessel is in sight of one another what should be the conduct of vessel what are the responsibility of the vessel what are the action we should take that all things are mentioned in the section two and third section is considered of just one rule that's rule 19 one of the most important rule and i would say definitely a surveyor will gonna ask you question from this rule. One of the most important. It's the conduct of a vessel and restricted visibility. Definitely one day you're gonna encounter restricted visibility. So this gives you an information about what should a vessel conduct when it encounters a restricted visibility. That all things we'll be seeing later on. When we'll start with the rules one by one, we'll go to detail. So, part C. Part C is lights and shape. Definitely, with the lights and shapes, you get an idea. In the night, the most important thing is light, and during daytime, we use shapes. Because that's easily visible. So part C, under this part, you have rules from rule number 20 to rule number 31. It contains detail about the lights and shapes to be dis displayed by different types of vessels. Like there are different types of vessels and what light they should exhibit and what shapes they should exhibit in daytime. That all details are under the rules. Very important. It is very necessary for the watchkeeping officer to identify different types of vessel by day or night by means of shapes or light displayed. Very important point. If you have a knowledge about 
this part you will definitely go going to able to identify the vessel by looking at the shape in the daytime and by looking at the night you'll get an idea it's what type of vessel or what is it engaged into is it fishing is it trawling is it getting towed or is it towing vessel so that idea you'll going to get at this lights and shape when you look at the shape when you look at the lights you'll get an idea about it So it's very important should uh, one should have a knowledge about this part C. And why is it important? Only by identifying the type of vessel, navigating watch keeper must be able to take appropriate action to avoid collision. So why is it important? It's important to avoid collisions. Because see, when for example, if you see a light two red light so you know the vessel is not under command or if you see a red light you know you're seeing a vessel from port side that you'll going to study it and there are the rules in which you're going to get an idea about that for now there's a basic what you should know under the section you get an information about the lights and shapes and the navigator should have a complete information about it to avoid collision so let's go to part d part d it gives detail uh, part d what is it sounds and light signals so what are the sound and light signal what are the warning signal a vessel should exhibit so that a vessel other vessel can come to know okay what is happening it gives detail of maneuvering and warning signal made by sound or light in both condition of visibility clear and restricted visibility the different sound signals the different light signals so that comes under this part you'll be studying that under this part let's go to part e exemption concern exemption to the positioning of the light and requirement of the sound signal for the vessels it gives you information about the position of the light where it should be or a sound signal for vessel whose keel is laid during the entry in force of this regulation provide that she complies with the requirement of the international regulation for prevention preventing collision at sea 1960 so that's about party part f verification of the compliance you should remember this now if you'll be going for an audit of you they can ask what is the latest amendment which has come down in colorado so you should know there's in part f which has been introduced verification of the compliance This is the latest amended amendments adopted in 2000, December 2013, and in force came in force from 1 January 2016. You should remember this. It contains Rule 39, 40, and 41. What does it provide? It provides for IMO verification of member states compliance with the provision of the Correct Convention. We should do. Fourth was the latest amendment which has come down. So that's part F is the latest amendment which has come down. Okay. And when it came in force from 1 January 2016. This is an important point. You can make note of it. Next, what are the annexes? As we have discussed before, there are four annexes. What is Annex One talks about? it gives you position and technical details of lights and shapes very simple and next to additional signal for fishing vessel fishing in close proximity what are the additional signals for fishing vessel vessel should exhibit when it's fishing in close proximity that comes in next to and next three gives you the technical details of sound signal appliances 
like NX1 gives you the technical details of lights and ships like that NX3 gives you the technical details of sound signal appliances and NX4 the one of the most important one and definitely we will be asked question in this NX4 that distress signal we'll be seeing everything in details later on so that is all for the introduction part of the correct I hope it was a bit helpful for you guys. So after this, I'll be completing all the rules, correct rules, because that will gonna help me also to mission and that will help you also. I hope it helps someone. <laughs> so we'll be starting with all the correct rules from rule number one and so on. So stay connected. Like it, please do like. If you need any changes, please do comment. Please press the notification icon and subscribe. Thank you for watching. I hope it was a bit helpful. It was helpful for you guys. Thank you very much. Hope to see you again. Till then, take care, stay safe, bon voyage. Bye.